Welcome to the Wallace Collection, where today's artists seem to have a thing about poultry. One of them's ground chicken bones into his paint, while another one's cracking eggs on her palate. Now, egg tempera has been used by many artists in very great murals, including the Sistine Chapel, so they're in good company. Exactly. I read about that in a Hencyclopedia. That's enough. It's Portrait Artist of the Year 2019. Of today's nine hopeful artists, four are professional. Martin Ireland, Olga Elise, Duncan Shoesmith and Colin Pethick. It's exciting, I'm feeling okay. You know, painting portraits are like walking a tightrope anyway. Sometimes you crash and burn, sometimes you get a result. And five are amateur. Emily Wolfe, Tom Mead, Tasha Davey, Toby Michael and Becca Train. I am most worried about ears. They tend to look a bit like prawns when I do them and hoping that it comes together and it's not just a muddy mess. These artists will be faced with three surprise celebrity sitters. I was hoping for somebody interesting, but this really takes the risk here. With only four hours to complete a portrait. I'm on the ropes here. You've just got to have a bit of blind faith. Got to crack on. Their talent will be scrutinised by our expert judges. Independent curator Kathleen Soriano, award-winning artist Taishan Schirenberg, and art historian Kate Bryan. If he messes it up, I think it would be one that I might not recover from. At stake is a £10,000 commission to paint global singing legend Sir Tom Jones for the National Museum of Wales. So, who can paint under pressure? Feels like everything could go wrong at this point. And claim a place in the semi-final. You look very relaxed and calm. Do I? Do you it's feel that inside, way? Inside, it's a bit like... Uh, well, a bit of... Uh, it's all right. Mm. You don't want it to become... Wah! Yeah. Before the contest begins, the judges review the self-portraits the artists submitted. Well, judges, another wall as glorious as ever. The first picture here. A very inventive use at a very domestic time, we all understand, brushing our teeth, looking at ourselves blearily in the mirror. What I think works really well is that the fragmentation somehow focuses the eye on the two self-portraits. And if you look at the smaller one, it's absolutely precious. I think there's just something very frank about this one. Completely looking at us, take me as you find me. It's partly to do with its stylization. I think, you know, the eyes are made slightly larger. There's a very sort of graphic quality to the face, but that wonderful rich red background. Now, this is painted from an old photograph, which is used to do the modern painting. It seems to me something quite majestic, you know, that feeling when maybe you turn your face towards the sun. Yet the hero artist, mm. deep in thought. The glasses are such a brilliant thing. They're oversized, the clothing seems oversized, but nothing really detracts from the intentness of that gaze. It's almost illustrative in its level of detail, but it's also very painterly. You, if you look at the neck, you can see the complexities of colours that she's used. I think it speaks of a completely different artistic tradition. It feels like it's Eastern European, and taste can be different things in different parts of the world. I like the way she's arranged her body. As an abstract shape, it looks very beautiful. You can feel the weight of the face and the way he's built it. It really is an architectural structure. It's just a sort of lovely, grubby, honest bit of painting. Very inventive, and I like the idea that he uses a fragment of a mirror. You can see it's broken off. We want something that surprises us, and that's exactly what this did. The treatment of the face is really interesting because this side you've got natural light and this side the electric light. If he doesn't get the lighting right today, I'll be quite disappointed. The skin tones are beautifully painted. Those lips are fantastic. And there's a gentleness to the way in which he's portrayed himself. It's very rare to find a convincing, laughing portrait, but this one works. She is actually laughing. Yeah, she really is. The eyes are correct, the way the nose bunches up, the cheeks. Everything about it is full of joy.
It's time to reveal today's three mystery sitters. Artists. Your sitter today is best known for her emotive and compelling TV roles, whether as an abducted teenager in 13 or the home-wrecking other woman in Dr Foster. It's Jodie Comer. <laughs> More recently, Jodie's received global critical acclaim for her role as a psychopathic assassin in the smash hit TV series, Killing Eve. Hello, Jodie. How are you doing? Hey, you all right? good, Jennifer. Thank you. How are you feeling about today? OK. Yeah? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys do. I'm a bit of a fidget, but I'll be on my best behaviour. Yeah, a bit of fidgeting's allowed, isn't it? Okay. Occasionally. Artist, your sitter today is a film actor who went to the darker side as one of Voldemort's evil snatchers in the Harry Potter films. So please have your wands and your paintbrushes ready and welcome Nick Moran. <laughs> Nick's prominent career spans three decades in theatre, film and television, having first shot to fame as Eddie the Card Sharp in cult British gangster film Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. <laughs> well, Nick, you paint a little yourself, yeah, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I'm just above terrible. Terrible but, plus. Yeah, exactly, but, yeah, terrible plus, a bad minus. Now, you brought your coat with you. Yeah, my, I'm a big fan of Colombo. No, it was... I just thought I'd break the colour up a little bit because I saw that it was blue and that I'm wearing blue. So instead of leaving it in the cloakroom downstairs, I thought I'd throw it over my lap and give you something to do. Artists, your sitter today has been described by Fashion Bible Vogue magazine as England's most eccentric dresser. I think it's fair to say his mantra is more is more. Please welcome Daniel Lismore. Artist, celebrity stylist and fashion icon. Daniel has designed outfits for stars including Nicki Minaj, Rita Ora and Mariah Carey. Please have a seat. Well, I'm gobsmacked, Daniel. I didn't know whether to shake your hands or kneel before you and pledge my <laughs> you allegiance. Do whatever you like. <laughs> you look absolutely stunning. Thank you. Morning wear. Morning wear. <laughs> Can you talk us through the look or is it... I mean, um, is it I don't know. I live my life as art, and this is just um, this is what happened this morning. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, what are you looking for today? Just a tight close-up of your face? Is that what you want them to paint? Well, I thought I'd give you options. You know, like I thought I'd give you something to look at. Well, you've certainly done that. It's just an amazing array of detail and extraordinary stuff for you to get your teeth into. As soon as someone tells you to like sit down on a chair, you automatically think, "Oh my God, how do I sit down on a chair?" <laughs> and what sort of eye line would work for you all? I like quite. Confrontational. Oh, she, she, she <laughs> like, look, to get Jodie to look right straight, at you. So. She's played a hit woman, you know. Yeah, like. I can give you the crazy eye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we going to do about the coat? I think it looks fantastic how it is. Yeah, I'm not sure sure about the sort of hand on. I don't oh, know that was just what I was listening yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Is there any way you'd like Daniel to sit? If it's okay with the other two artists, face somewhere around there. Is that okay? Yeah, it's fine. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, we'll need it. Artists, I hope you're feeling inspired because your challenge is about to begin. You have four hours to complete your portraits and your time starts now. Most of today's artists are starting by focusing immediately on their canvas. But one is more concerned with the character of her sitter. I'm gonna take a picture of you. Do you wanna do a laugh or do you wanna do a smile or a... whichever you whatever you do you would you rather something happier? Do you feel like that captures your personality yeah, better than so. a straight face? Yeah. Let's go. I for like it, to then. think I'm a fun person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that should be good. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. I'm really happy with my sitter. She's such a beautiful lady who just glows. <laughs> and um, I decided to take a photo of her smiling because I think that's what came out more than like a serious face. At 17 years old, A-level student Tasha Davey is the youngest artist in this year's competition. Her self-portrait took 24 hours to complete and impressed the judges with its expressive quality. 
Sasha, we thought your submission really stood out because it was oh, such a convincing you. laughter. It wasn't even just a <laughs> smile. I'm quite excited to see here that you've caught an expression as well. Yeah, the, the yeah. see teeth, which we so rarely see yeah. on Portrait <laughs> Artist of the Year. Yeah, I really just like to capture the personality the most because I like to tell like a story of my pieces. And mm. I could tell as soon as I met her, she was such a lovely, happy person. And mm. I thought I just have to capture it. Yeah. You're quite brave with the scale. Yeah. What, what I, leads you to that size? It just allows me to get in so much more detail. But tonally, you've got loads more work to do, haven't you? Because you've yeah. given yourself a lot more of a surface area, mm. so you've mm -hmm. made it harder for yourself. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. We better go. <laughs> Duncan, you've gone off like a rocket. <laughs> it's uh, got a beautiful likeness already. Oh, bless you. Now, I understand that, like me, you have small kids uh, at home. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's the love so, of our lives. So, like me, have you come here today for a bit of a rest? Yes, this is lovely. Isn't it? This is. <laughs> Isn't it bliss? Duncan Shoesmith is a professional artist from Wiltshire. He juggles painting at home in his garage with raising his three young children who were pivotal in his preparation for today. To train, I've kept the door open so that the kids coming in annoying, ask me questions, spilling stuff, knocking stuff over. To get used to the interference of today. And, and the annoyance. It's very bad radio reception there, so I've had the radio on. So just intermittently cutting in and out. So if I come running up to you and shout traffic reports in your ear every 20 <laughs> yeah. minutes, you'll feel right at home. <laughs> yeah. Well, Martin, I saw the look in your eye when <laughs> when Daniel came in. Yeah, what yeah. do you make of it? We have a fabric situation here, <laughs> metallic fabric. If I'd known, I'd bought my metal paints. It's quite a challenge. <laughs> it is. It's not a portrait, it's a fashion statement. <laughs> it is, it is indeed. <laughs> Martin Ireland is a professional artist from London. Having taught life drawing classes for over 20 years, he's developed a unique approach for portraying any sitter. You've made an incredible start. You're not intimidated by this. No, you just have to open up your mind and just sort of say, what am I looking at? I think you're allowed to read into it exactly yeah, what yeah, you like. Yeah. Fairy tales, I, 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 nightmares. I, I mean, is this a king, a queen? You could not have expected a more unusual challenge. No. And you're smiling at the yes. prospect. Well, that's very good news for all of us. <laughs> While nobody has come dressed for the occasion quite like Daniel, one artist has carefully considered his wardrobe for today. I'm wearing the same shirt I wore in my self-portrait. Probably my favourite shirt, actually. It's not like a trademark or anything, but, you know, it's brought me luck so far. I mean, can't be that bad. Toby Michael is in his final year at Winchester School of Art. Having successfully featured an item of clothing in his submission painting, he's planning something similar today. Toby, Absolutely. how's it going? Looking it's going great. All right, it's definitely Nick Moran. Yeah, I've scaled him down a little bit because I wanted to get a bit of that coat in there. Are you going to include that? Do you think? Yeah, or are you going to wait and see. You are. Absolutely, it breaks up a little bit, and it actually works well with his skin tone. Okay, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> well, thanks. The artists are one hour into their challenge. You've just got to have a bit of blind faith. Might be a disaster, might not. <laughs> we'll pull through. You've got to crack on. Slow start, getting all the gridding done. Still at that kind of problem-solving stage, but um, it's getting there. It's going to be a bit of a challenge, all that metal. And which head do I paint first? Well, I was hoping for somebody interesting, but um, this really takes the brisket. Competing for a place in the semi-final, our nine artists are into their second hour, painting actors Nick Moran, Jodie Comer, and fashion designer Daniel Lismore whose appearance has led to some bold compositional decisions. The face is the most important thing. And thankfully, there's enough outfit from shoulders up. So I think that captures enough of him. 
but there's a lot more to take on here, so we'll see. A fine art degree student, Tom Mead, is studying at the University of Arts, Wimbledon. Influenced by a love of cinema, he aims to create motion in his paintings. Tom, we're very taken with your approach. We've got not just one portrait there, but all these refractions. I wanted to get something that gives you a sense of moving around here, moving in the room. There's some nice angles in there that you can't quite get face on, and I'd like to include that somehow. And is that because it gives you a sense that it can be sort of a multifaceted view of someone? Mm, definitely. I'm really inspired by film. The idea of a painting being more of a film still that has a bit of movement, so you get the idea of what's going on in that scene more than just a photograph, which is also why I've done it landscape, get the more like 16 by 9 feeling of a film. Hello, Colin. Hello, Stephen. Now, I approached you with some trepidation. Really? Because I understand there are ground chicken bones at work. Yes. If you grind the middle wings of a chicken bone into the gesso, it gives me the desired ground that right. I like to work on. OK. I mean, my neighbours and friends just keep sort of saving chicken bones. I come home and there's bags on my front doorstep. As long as you know why they're there, that's fine. If that's I came right. home to find a bag of chicken bones on my doorstep, I'd move. Yeah. <laughs> a former bricklayer, Colin Pethick became a professional artist after a back injury stopped him from working. But it was another life-changing event that led him to entering the competition. Now, Colin, there's a picture of someone over there. Oh, Can yes. Can you tell me yeah. about that? Um, well, that's my um, dear departed wife, unfortunately. She was an artist, uh -huh. and I lost her back in October. I'm sorry to hear uh, that. Uh, um, it's OK, it just gets you a little bit. Yeah. Um, so really why I'm here today is, is part, you know, she loved the programme like I did and, you know, she always encouraged me to do it. And I, I didn't, it wasn't until she was gone, I was so busy nursing her that I had the time to actually enter, you know, so, so you know, I brought that up. You know, she's with me like sort of Quite thing, right, quite you know, right too. Yeah. She would have loved to have been here. Well, you're here because of her, so. Yeah, that's it, really, yeah. yeah. I'll Thanks leave you to it, Colin, thank, thank you. you. Each week, our sets reference a period or movement in art history. What's today's theme? The contemporary take a playful interpretation of the Baroque era. Of the Baroque era, OK. So we have the opulence of the Baroque era, so we have beautiful draperies. We've got a play on marbling, because marble is ubiquitous in the Baroque era. And behind us is a stylized version of candlelight. If we generally think of the Baroque era, we think of drama, we think of dark and light, chiaroscuro. Mm. We know that Caravaggio, the great Baroque painter, used candlelight to great effect, and so this is a contemporary version of it, and it emanates from behind Jody's Yes, for me, head. it does hint at the religious symbolism of the halo, too, don't you think? Yeah, which fits perfectly into the Baroque. How is Jody doing as a sitter? She's very beautiful, and as a portrait painter, of course, one wants well-lived and ravaged faces. There's a lot to paint, but her bone structure mm. is beautiful, and um, our artist is doing rather well. I'm super excited. I've actually never had a portrait painted of me before. I'm quite a fidget, so four hours being still to me was going to be a challenge, but no, it's been really enjoyable. So, Kate, theme of the day, I'm assuming, is Mediterranean swimming pools. <laughs> Close. Close. Uh, we're in the Baroque. Okay. So you could be transported to a Mediterranean swimming pool, but it'd have to be in the 17th century. So Nick behind us has brought a Macintosh with mm. him, which is, I assume, a welcome yeah, gesture. Yeah, I think it's nice that the artists have something else to engage with. They may or may not paint it. He might be disappointed. He's a very good sitter, sits very still, quite composed, quite calm. Good I cheekbones. Good cheekbones, and I think the blue offsets him. It's quite cool. Scene, um, they should do well with him. As long as I'm not too old, too bald, and too ugly, I'll be perfectly happy with the outcome. <laughs> That's it. I'd like to be 10 years younger, please. Thank you. Now, Kathleen, this set behind us, what's that about? This set is really celebrating the way in which Baroque painting often used fabric or drapes and to suggest that lusciousness, so lots of rich velvets or brocades. We've got rather a Baroque sitter. What do you think of He's him? He's the most perfect person to sit for a Baroque day. I mean, Daniel is just Baroque personified in the 21st century. He's really quite special. 
I love art, I love artists. Any art is great. And if they capture me in segments or they don't put my face in it or they don't put the jewelry in it, it'll be great, uh, whatever they do. As if completing a portrait in four hours isn't challenging enough, one artist is using a medium that requires skillful, last-minute creation. To make tempera, you want to separate the white of the egg from the yolk, and then you roll the egg yolk around on a bit of kitchen roll or in the palms of your hands, pierce it, and you just want the inside, you don't want the sack. Mix that with water, and then I just choose little bits of pigment, and I mix them together with your palette knife. Tempera has that great translucent quality. The colours glow through. Emily Wolfe is an amateur artist from Dorset. She painted Sol Campbell in Portrait Artist of the Year 2014 and has since swapped her palette of oils for egg tempera, an ancient and demanding medium. Emily, tell me, does tempera dry the moment you put it on? Pretty much, yeah. And so you, you have a few seconds to move it, but once it's then, there, it's... And then you can layer it immediately, yeah. put another layer on yeah. top of it. So how do you make sure that your palette doesn't dry out? It does? It does. I just keep mixing new bits. OK, well, it sounds like a painstaking technique, so I'll let you get on with it. <laughs> Thank you. The mouth is quite challenging because Daniel's wearing, like, really big theatrical lipstick. So I can see his lip line and where he's painted the lipstick on around that. And I don't know which one to go with, how to get that in there, how to have that reading. It's not like I've just done a big red smush. Amateur artist Becca Train is an office manager from Kent. Despite showing artistic talent at school, she gave up painting for over a decade until a recent life drawing class reignited her passion. Becca, I've known Daniel for quite a few years now. You've caught something of him which is getting close to a sort of a glower, which you do see from sometimes in his professional photographs. Why is that the look that spoke to you? I think it's the whole headdress and crown and stuff. There's something kind of like regal or Joan of arc about oh, it. You definitely caught the dramatic side of him. I mean, not that he's remotely dramatic in all of that outfit. <laughs> <laughs> now, Olga, this is a most brilliantly impactful painting. Why have you chosen to use these colours? Because I like putting unusual colours for the skin tones. Right. To make it in my style, to make it interesting. Professional artist Olga Elise is from Moldova. Now based in London, she hand paints luxury fashion accessories and describes her painting style as fantastic reality. Is this in the tradition of your painting from your home back in Moldova? I learned to paint when I was a very young girl. I went to Children's School of Art and I learned to paint from life. I think that the technique is quite traditional, but the colours makes it very modern. Well, it's very good. I hope you're enjoying Thank yourself, because you. it's such a yeah. strange experience, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the artists are almost halfway through their challenge, with two hours left to complete their portraits. It's pretty terrifying, but this is not normal conditions. This whole journey is full of anxiety more than a usual painting would be. My main problem is trying to like not be overawed by it. It is like being in an exhibition of your own work whilst you're doing it, which is quite strange. I'm one of those people that wing it, so you just start with a mistake and just keep correcting those mistakes. It's kind of a life philosophy, really. For an artist, this is hard work. If you were an author, this is like reading out your first drafts before the rubbish gets taken out. It's bearing your soul, really. I have to car crash my way through an emergency. And it's the Apollo 13 syndrome. I have to find an air breathing apparatus out of a toilet roll and a bit of sticky black plastic. Here's 
here at the Wallace Collection, nine competitive artists are two hours into their four-hour challenge, painting Daniel Lismore, Jodie Comer and Nick Moran. I do a lot of demonstrating, you see. I don't get to paint anybody as handsome as this chap, though. <laughs> Flattery gets you There's no prizes for flattery, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not the judge. Yeah. <laughs> so halfway through, what are the judges thinking? A little round-up of how they're doing. Mm -hmm. Jodie is sitting very still. She's got Duncan over there using big slabs of colour. I like what Duncan's doing. It's the kind of painting that's actually good to watch mm. emerge. Jodie is a rather more refined creature mm. than I see in his painting, and I'm hoping that will eventually come through. Next to him is Emily, very different style. She's focusing more, I think, on that translucency that she loves to get mm. from the tempera, but I want to feel it come to life a little bit more. If she keeps going, the egg tempera should come into its own and we should get a very different quality to everybody else's. In the section to our left, we have the extraordinarily dressed Daniel. When Daniel came in, I thought, this is too much information. Mm. And all of them, in some way, are doing rather well. Tom's has been lovely from the word go, and it's the kind of artwork you want to form a protective fence around, that you just don't want anything to go wrong. Producing something that's really sensitive, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed for the rest of the afternoon. If he messes it up, I think it would be one that I might not recover from. <laughs> Becca is giving us something quite luscious. I like the scale of it, I like the colour tone, the energy. As opposed to Tom, I think Becca's problem might be not enough time. Nick Moran in the final segment. Toby took a long time, my God, he took a long time to get going. Mm. But the story's then is building up nicely. He talks about putting all the coat and stuff. I don't know when he's got time to do that. And Colin seems to be trying to find Nick by working more and more paint onto his canvas. But I like the way he puts paint down. I think all the colours are working really beautifully. I think he probably would get a likeness. We know how good a painter he is in his submission. He's still got a couple of hours. Maintaining their focus under pressure can be demanding for the artists. But what's it like for their sitters? Sit there and do nothing sounds far less tiring than it actually is. You know, you're trying to concentrate and you're trying to maintain something for them. I'm not delivering coal, you know, but it's, it's actually more tiring than I thought. You still have a freedom to move or scratch your nose if you should feel the need to. I haven't got a clue what to expect, so that's the most exciting part, yeah. I used to be the model for life drawing classes years ago, so I'm kind of used to it. But I never had any, anything on in those days, so <laughs> it's very different. <laughs> no matter who the sitter is, every face has its own challenging characteristics. Slowly the face is getting tighter. You're aware that, say, on the cheek, not on mine, but on anyone with cheekbones, <laughs> that it's going to come in and then the jaw will connect here. You're looking for shadows. The nose, obviously not just a triangle. What's the bone doing there? The, the, you know, all this sort of thing. Cracking bone structure. <laughs> I mean, this is what I'm used to dealing with. Now, Tom, a startling sitter. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's a um, quite hard face. It would be quite hard to get the likeness underneath all the, you know... Gear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but you have, and that's why I think it's remarkable that you've actually been able to sort of strip away the stuff that Daniel's wearing enough to get a really good likeness. Do you feel the pressure of the time? Yeah, definitely, that's, that's going to... Well, I thought that would be the main issue until I saw... <laughs> Daniel, <laughs> Daniel, is and Daniel is an issue. Having overcome the initial surprise at their flamboyant sitter, the artists painting Daniel have progressed with varying interpretations. Hello, Martin. Oh, hello. Giving Good. yourself enough to do? Yes, more than enough. I mean, you've got nearly all of him down to below the knees. Yeah, well, it's the whole story. It's the fabrics, it's the clothes, that's his story. There's something about the chainmail. He looks like a knight going into battle. Well, that's it. It's his armour plating. Right. It's his protecting veil. And that's the title. You've given the painting a title? Yeah. The artists have just half an hour left and are feeling the pressure. It's terrible. Can I come back tomorrow and do four more hours on top of this four hours? Please? 
It's OK. You should never be completely happy with what you do, otherwise you just stop. There's always room for improvement. I can't even, like, think where I am right now. If I stop for a minute, I'll probably have a panic attack or something. It's like climbing a mountain and it's getting steeper. Pushing that little pebble up that mountain is getting harder as they get into the detail. I'm mostly worried about the eyes. I need to get them perfect before I carry on anything else. They can completely ruin a painting if you mess that up. Nine artists are nearing the end of their four-hour challenge painting Nick Moran, Jodie Comer and Daniel Lismore. It feels like everything could go wrong at this point. I just got to make the most of the time that's left, I think. But it's just making sure I don't ruin it now. I kind of have to watch it because I can sort of kill it sometimes, push it over a cliff. So you can overwork things, you know? It's got to a point. I don't want to muck it up. I think there's a lightness there. I think there's a nice balance within the picture. To take it on to a whole new level of crowd days. Artists, you have 10 minutes left. It's a race against time now to get as many details in as I can, because that's what I want to show with tempera, but I don't know if I'm going to get enough done. Doing a few little details here and there, not doing anything huge, because I think the huge stuff has already been done, hopefully. I kind of want to go run around the room and kick everyone else's easel over. Go, aha, <laughs> now I'm the only one. Martin, what can you do now to uh, make it a masterpiece? Try, try and pick out the, the, the glitty bits. The glitty bits. Artists, your time is up. Please put down your equipment and stand away from your easels. It's time to reveal the completed portraits of Daniel Lismore, Nick Moran and Jodie Comer and for them to pick their favourite to keep. Well, Nick, you've completed your sitting. Are you relieved? Uh, I've never worked harder. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm intrigued more than relieved. I mean, you know, I really want everybody to do themselves justice and I'm really keen to see everything. OK, artists, turn your easels round. <laughs> wow. They're all excellent. And they all represent something slightly different as well. It's the same face thinking, thinking three different things. It's a very interesting choice of colours, and I like the way that the painting hovers between detail and a deliberately vague, abstract background. You want to look more because you want to know what that man's thinking. That's tremendous in the time frame and you've got the raincoat in. What I'm struck most by is the boldness of the brush strokes. The closer you get, the more you can appreciate the strength of the paint. Now you have to make a choice. One only to take with you home. Eeny me, eeny <laughs> mode. Um, I'm going to opt for Collins. Uh, I, I don't know, I'll, I'll sign the others. <laughs> <laughs> Jodie, how was it? It was good. It was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, purely because I fidget a lot, but it was strangely therapeutic, so... Let's not delay any longer. Mm -hmm. Artists, please turn your easels. Oh, my gosh. I feel like there's a real strength. I really like the colours. I think it's amazing. Love the hair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's incredible. There's something about the mouth on this which I feel is spot on. I love the collar as well. Again, the hair. I love it. 
nervous. And the ability to take a picture, capture an emotion, and then imitate the smile like that is such a skill. I love the green of the eyes. Right, Jodie. I need you to pick one of these to take home with you. My heart's really pounding. Um... <laughs> I'm sorry. Um... I think Emily's. <laughs> well yeah. done, Emily. <laughs> Artists, please turn your easels. I love them. Well, that's good. It looks like my auntie, strangely. <laughs> <laughs> They're beautiful. I want all of them. I love how you've captured the fabric, and I can see all the things that I just like about myself in there also, which is, you know, a true representation. It really looks like me. Usually when people paint me, it's too clean, and I can see that I'm tired in this. It's amazing, thank you. Thank you very much. You've captured how I feel right now, and you've got the eyes right. It's kind of like a nightmare version of me, <laughs> and <laughs> I love it. So, Daniel, you're gonna to have to pick one of these to take home with you, one and only one. I think because it makes me feel like I'm being haunted by my own self. I think I will take home your one. Thank you. Thank you. While the artists take a break, the judges discuss the day's works. Colin was really keen to get the paint down and find Nick within the paint, and I think he succeeded, actually. There are sections of that head that we should have done very well. You know, Nick's right eye is beautifully painted, mm. the nose really well observed. Toby's submission was so brilliant, and I feel that we're getting partly towards what he can achieve mm. here. There are moments which are just absolutely stunning. The forehead and that eye just going towards the nose, they're just beautiful. Olga's portrait of Nick today was stymied somewhat by the lack of invention. I love her stylization. I love looking at art that is slightly outside of our taste range, but done very well, and her submission certainly was that. These colours are wild. Becca's brilliantly ambitious. She went for this very big head, but I think she pulled it off. He does have a sort of glower that he can put on, and I think she captured that. I think it's a fabulous likeness. I think what Tom does really well is he's really captured that stately grace that Daniel has. There's this filmic quality, but there's also a really human quality. I was so excited when I saw Martin start this morning. I thought, yeah, here's somebody who's going to tackle Daniel in all his glory. As the day wore on, it lost its vitality. He left painting the face too late. It's not there, unfortunately. Tasha was very ambitious producing such a large head. She needs a lot of time to get all the detail in that really makes her paintings work. I think she's treated the skin exceptionally well. I think she could have done a better job if it was smaller today. Yeah. I think Emily caught an incredible intensity from Jodie. Stern but beautiful. What she's done today is lovely. Duncan's been able to capture the lighting on Jodie and there's some fabulous colours in the shadows here. The fragmentation with the paint on the face slightly irritates and distracts me, but overall, I think it's a fabulous portrait study. Before choosing the winning portrait, the judges narrow their selection to a short list of three. We've got too many good ones today. There's a very powerful three there. They all seem to make each other stronger by being together. I'm actually very happy with those three as well. Artists, it's been a pleasure and a privilege to watch your creative talent and your commitment today. We've enjoyed your being here. As you know, the judges are only allowed to select three artists to shortlist. And the first artist on that shortlist is Duncan Shoesmith. <laughs> and the second artist is Tom Mead. Third artist to be shortlisted, Toby Michael. To 
commiserations to the rest of you. It doesn't mean that we didn't appreciate your work and enjoy its success. So thank you very much indeed. To feel this close to the semi-final is very exciting, but I don't know if my money will be on me. Taking into consideration the submissions the artists entered with, alongside today's portraits, helps the judges pick their winner. Six very powerful portraits yeah. looking at us. Definitely, we're very pleased with our shortlist this afternoon. Great, so we have Duncan's, first of all. Jodie's almost sculptural in form. I mean, he was really looking for that construction of her head. The power comes from the way Duncan puts on paint. There's a confidence in it. There are similarities between his self-portrait and his portrait of Jodie in the way the marks and the palette is used. It's just such a powerful portrait. I just think that Duncan is someone who knows exactly who he is as an artist. Mm. It was a good painting all day, really. Then we move to the nocturnal world of Toby. There's some beautiful, brilliant touches, and there is a kind of melancholy narrative that comes from the yeah. painting. The way in which he absorbed the colours from the background made it sing harmoniously with Nick's jacket. Just very clever. Toby's submission is absolutely sensational. It's got a maturity. I think he's full of potential. And then Tom has used another fractured face. Is that a trick he's used before, or has there been a development? Well, I think what he does is really authentic. Tom doesn't use this way of composing reality as a trick. It's just incredibly striking to see someone so young be able to produce two really arresting paintings. When you look at Tom's self-portrait, you see it is an exercise in the art of looking, and he does it with such simplicity and grace. I think Tom got better today. There's a completeness of the vision in his portrait of Daniel. He just stepped up. So how are you going to choose between these three? Mm. Oh, not fun. <laughs> We've had too good a day. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a really high-quality problem. Right, well, I look forward to seeing how you solve it. Duncan, Toby, Tom, we usually, at this stage, choose one person to go through to the semi-final. However, the judges today have found it so difficult to make one selection because the standard has been so high. So we're putting two artists through to the semi-final. The first of these artists is... Duncan Shoesmith. And the second artist going through to the semi-final today is Tom Mead. Duncan and Toby's paintings were incredible, so I couldn't have asked for anything better. So happy. I'm feeling quite speechless at the moment, quite overwhelmed. I'm so sorry. It's all right. Disappointed myself, but it's been a really, really wonderful experience. I thought Tom and Duncan's portraits were excellent. They both deserve to go through. Uh, yeah, um, uh, extraordinary. Who'd have thought? Blown away. Yeah, semi-final. Just got to go in there charging. <laughs> We've had an incredible day. We've had some really good art. It was so good, in fact, all three of us felt that in our shortlist were two really good artists. On the one hand, we had Duncan, great painter, great understander of how to manipulate paint, produce beautiful portraits. On the other hand, we had young Tom evolving from his self-portrait today. He went up a gear, and we really want to see what they're going to produce in the semi-final.